Hello and a very warm welcome to our third series of Design Date. I'm Claire German, Managing Director at Design Centre Chelsea Harbour. In this virtual format, we're keeping our community engaged and inspired wherever they are. We're bringing together designers and industry insiders for some great conversations online. These webinars shine a light on creative collaborations and today we're going to hear the secrets of success from an award-winning partnership. The studio is known around the world for beautiful projects and designs that are infused with continental flair. It's my absolute pleasure to introduce the wonderful Paolo Moschino and Philip Vergalen of Nicholas Hasen Limited. Paolo and Philip bring an international point of view to their work, so today's session, World Travelled Interiors, is aptly titled, not least as we're all grounded at home. And who better to pilot the session than Charlotte Abrahams? With so much to discuss, there may not be time for questions and answers, so without further ado, over to you, Charlotte. Fasten your seatbelts, sit back and enjoy the journey. Thank you so much. Thanks, Claire. And hello and welcome, Philip and Paolo. I am absolutely delighted to be talking to you this afternoon. You are beaming in from what looks like a sunny West Sussex. I think it's your lighting rather than the... <laughs> I think the lighting is very good. It's not that very sunny. <laughs> yeah, good. Um, as Claire said, you know, you have a absolutely internationally acclaimed um, business and the international element is, is really at, at the heart of it and begins with the two of you. Um, Paolo, you were born and raised in Italy and Philip, you were born and grew up in Belgium. Can we start by the two of you just saying, you know, what the influence of your, the places that we, you were born and raised have had on your aesthetic? Um, Paolo, do you want to start? Sure, yeah. I, I was born in Italy. I came to England many, many, many moons ago. Don't ask me how many. <laughs> it's embarrassing to say. So actually, England has been uh, my adopted country, and my experience in work and everything is all uh, here in England. Um, although, you know, coming from Italy, I come from a small town near Florence. It's a seaside town, so I'm always used, you know, to the different light and mm -hmm. you know, the colours. And, you know, Tuscany is, for me, is, is one of the best parts in Italy. So, but I came to London when I was very young. So majority of my experiences was created here in England. Everything I learned in my career is, is in England. So I started working here in England with Nikki Haslam. I worked with Nikki for many years. And then after that, we separated the company. I started my own company under the name Nicholas Haslam Limited. I met uh, my partner, Philip, here in England. So everything for me is from England. My family is England now. So I met Philip many years ago here in England, and then he started joining the company, working with us. Since then, the company is expanding a lot, I must say, and Philip has brought another flair, the flair from Belgium, and also the flair of, of, of it's like a different, um, how can I say it? I pass it to you, you explain it. <laughs> <laughs> Does your Belgium route, you know, just is that been an influence on the company? And, and maybe it has, but I think, you know, I, I before joining the company and, and I had another career, I was 17 years, um, I had a career for 17 years with American Express. So I was a banker for 17 years. I lived everywhere. I lived in New York, I lived in Washington, I lived in Frankfurt, I lived in Amsterdam. Um, so, so um, and, and, and I loved working for American Express. I loved, there is a correlation between loving numbers and creativity, I promise you. Is that? <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, so about 11 years ago, I joined um, Paolo and I at, 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 and, uh, and now head up the um, interior design uh, studio. Um, I think, you know, right, everybody knows how spectacularly beautiful um, and, and uh, Italy is. Belgium is a very tiny country, yes. but a very creative country. I think if you see the influence of Belgians on fashion, on interior design, considering how tiny it is, it, it's, it, you know, it, it's... Um, but there is a particular yeah. elegance about Belgium and there is a mm. style. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's very recognizable, you say, the Belgian style and you, you immediately can tell. Mm, absolutely. And uh, how do you work together, your partners in work and in life, which isn't always the easiest thing to combine? Well, no, it's not always the easiest, that's for sure. <laughs> do you, how do you make it work? Do you have very separate areas of the business that you're responsible for? 
We yes. do, but you know, Philip and I have now been together for almost 25 years. And we live together, we work together, we do everything together. We fight a lot, you know, when we make decisions together. But um, some years ago, we decided that the best way to go ahead was to have completely different roles within the company. Mm -hmm. So now Philip is the head of the interior design of the company. So he does uh, all the interior design projects. I have a different role in the company, which is more uh, the merchandise, all the goods, the distribution of all our products. I do the administration, I deal with the HR, I do some of the boring stuff, but all also the some of the stuff. creative. <laughs> <laughs> and Philip does now all the interior design. Of course, we discuss everything course, together, you know. Yeah. You know, we, we, especially now that we've been in lockdown for almost one year, and for one year now we've been living in Sussex. We've been very lucky that we have this little house in Sussex, so we can be outside, we have a garden. But even here, you know, we make a point of every day to set the table just for the two of us. We sit down at the table, we discuss everything, and the same we do in the evening. You know, we sit, we sit down at the table with a nice dinner and we discussed the project of the day and when we came here almost a year ago for the lockdown we, we we started working from home and we had a desk in the living room where we used to share and fight every morning to the first one to get to the computer most of the time I ended up using my laptop on the kitchen table and then we said look this is gonna last for a while so it's best if we plan it properly so we decided to convert one of the stables here in the house into an office, which is where we are sitting today. Okay. But now it's actually, it's, 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 it's a kind of discipline because now in the morning we get up, we have breakfast, and then we go to the office. So we actually walk to the office. Mm. We, walk, we walk back home for lunch and then we go back to the <laughs> office. Yeah. But it really makes, it, it works. It really is completely, mm. yeah. Anyway, Absolutely. Uh, and tell me about your inspirations. I mean, obviously, travel is a huge one, and you, you're, you're having to kind of use your, your memories and your imaginations at the moment. Um, and some of your inspirations are set out in your new book, um, well, which, well, which we've got some pictures of, haven't we? Yeah. Um, perhaps we'll have a look at those, and you could just talk to us about all the... I mean, there's a myriad of influences, I think, from travel to, to film and novels and art. I, I think for me, and something that not, people sometimes find strange, of course we're all influenced by visual beauty. You go, to, um, you go to Italy, you see a facade of a cathedral and you think, oh my God, that pattern on the top is beautiful for a paneling on the bottom of a bookcase in, in, in London. But for me, the biggest influence is novels. Really? I, 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 I am a, I'm a bookaholic, so... Um, <laughs> I love reading books and I get completely lost into books. And there are certain um, uh, authors that are so good at describing interiors. And what it is, is it's for me, I create these interiors in my head. So it, it's my version of their description. But for me, that is really inspirational. Mm. Because there's sometimes you can even smell, the, you know, the way they describe it. You, you know what this room smells like. So this, this, this for me is, is, these are three projects that, um, it, they're all in London. Um, the two on the sides are, are um, um, a large project in London. Um, we chose it because they're the two covers of our book. One is the US cover, one is the European cover. The one in the middle is, a, is, a, a, is one of my favorite projects in, in um, Holland Park. So, um, and it sort of shows the mixture of 1940s French with an 18th century Coromandel screen, with um, the commode that comes from Casa Rosado in, in Argentina, and then always a bit of leopard. Always. <laughs> always, always a bit of leopard. <laughs> and the other yeah, thing yeah, that. that <laughs> lots, of, lots of books. Like yeah. Philip said, you know, <laughs> our house is full of books. If one day you I, come, you will see. I mean, there are books everywhere. Books. But books, you know, for us, is the very, they're part of decoration. Yeah. I think a room without books doesn't oh. thing. You yeah. know? No, no, absolutely. Absolutely. I've just noticed someone's just flashed up a question to say, what is your favorite book? Uh, uh, my favorite novel? in terms of the inspiration i think in terms of inspiration yes legacy legacy by sybil bedford oh, okay i mean just, uh, just read the way she describes those berlin interiors and then 
the opposite is the Bavarian countryside that there is. I mean, it just makes my hair, you know. <laughs> oh, wonderful. And the other thing I think that inspires you is your, is your own home in Sussex. We've got some pictures of that and they are so full of sunshine. Um, I wish just... I was today. Today I'm afraid yeah. it's but still beautiful. I mean, Philip and I, we love coming here. Mm. And before the pandemic, you know, we used to come down on weekends and we come here to relax. So we arrive on a Friday, we close the gate with, behind us. We don't open the gates until Monday when we go back to London. And here, literally, we recharge, you know, because yeah. London is so hectic. When we are at the office, there is not a second, you know, to think because mm. everything is happening, happening. Mm. When we finally come down here, we we sort of deflate and relax, you know, we can think, we can enjoy it, we can think what we can do next week, we can think what we're going to travel next time. So travel, yes, yeah. really is a big inspiration. So for the fact that you've been here so much in the past year, has that changed the way you work, you know, with ex with more time to think and... and... No. no, I have less time no. to think. I spent my time on Zoom calls with my team, yeah, or with my, my clients and... and it, it's it, it's really hectic. From nine to six, I'm on conference call. And okay. if you want to know where Paolo and I are sitting, it's that image on the right. We are sitting right underneath the clock tower. There, that's our office. So. Lovely. <laughs> and tell us a bit about how all these these different influences feed into your interior design projects. Um, and again, we've got some fabulous pictures. We're going to kind of crisscross the globe, which is rather lovely. Um, and what would be lovely to hear about as we look at pictures is the way that the location of each has influenced the way you've designed it. Um, you know, there's a very strong aesthetic going through um, that's obviously yours, but also the, the influence, as I said, of, of the location of the project. This is in the Dominican Republic. Yes. This is the magic of Zoom. You see, now we are all in Dominican Republic. Fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> I've been... I'm, you know, sometimes there's nothing better than being a, a little bit lucky and, and meeting the clients that have since become very, very close friends of, of ours um, that, that for which we did this project. Um, it, it, it turns out that, yes, location is, is, is incredibly important. Of course, you're not going to design a chalet in Stadt in Dominican Republic, but it's more about the personality of my client. That is really at the center of what we designed. Now, what is very special with this project is that it was originally, many moons ago, built by Oscar de la Renta wow. in, in Dominican Republic. And it, it's infused by his elegance and, mm. and, and style. And um, where we, we really, I, I really connected with my clients slash friends now, is that we wanted to keep that, that, that ethos of that, 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 that elegance. We didn't want to walk in there and just throw everything out and start for fresh. No, no. I mean, it was a big job. We did a lot of work together, mm -hmm. but we kept, I hope, um, no, I the, it's, it's uh, the, the elegance of, of what the house was. It's yeah. very beautiful. I, and I, ever to put his signature on this project without losing, the, as he anything. said, the feel mm -hmm. of the house. You know, yeah. It's mm -hmm. about his style house. Yeah. So it would have been, crazy i mean to destroy it would have been crazy no, it's no, like no, no. A, i it's like it. a, not today it's like a historic house yeah. in dominican republic yeah. also mm -hmm. it's one place where i walked in before even we started the project and i uh, honestly i swear to god i pinched myself i thought this is what paradise looks like oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> unless it looks like unless it looks like portofino which i think is where we're going next isn't it <laughs> Got oh. jumping now. We are in Portofino. <laughs> in Portofino. It's, a, it's a very small town, North Italy. A very special uh, place. Uh, place. It's a village. Um, um, but everybody knows Portofino. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, I left my is, heart in Portofino. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we just show two bedrooms because I think they're fun and they're, they're yeah. these are children's bedrooms. So so they're not um, as as grown up. As, as you would normally see. But the image on the left is, is um, of the drawing room that has the most spectacular view over the, the marina in, in Portugal. How fabulous. I mean, you know, this is what I'm saying again. We're lucky to, to be able to, um, 
do projects like absolutely that. and now we're going to the highlands of scotland i think to a to a hotel yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> This this project, but again, look how beautiful and sunny. Yeah, uh, it's incredible. Uh, uh, you know what? If there's one thing I'm grateful for, apart from the the fact that again the client became a, a, a close friend of mine, um, um, but the most person of the other. time they do because we spend yeah. so much, so much time, time with them. them. You know, but the she time. made me discover the beauty of the Highlands, and you know it is spectacular. I I I'd never been before. Um, this is a historic hunting lodge uh, on a 25,000 acre estate. Um, it was quite sad. It looked like a retirement home when we started, um, the, 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 my client and I. And then it, it was a complete that, yeah. gut job. Yeah. Um, and it's, um, yeah, it's a place that um, is very special to, to me. But yeah, and, the, and the colours of this, this bedroom, I mean, they're so perfectly reflect the, the, the landscape that we've got up there. I mean, it's incredible. I'm, I'm happy you say that because the brief of the client was bring the outside in. Oh, well, you, you have. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I hope the client was pleased. Yeah. Do you know what's so um, funny? The first time I went up there, I flew into Inverness. I got into a taxi and the driver very kindly turned around to me and he said, I'm terribly sorry, sir, but the traffic today, it's impossible. Impossible. <laughs> it's going to take much longer than usual. So we start driving. I didn't see a car. I didn't see a car. <laughs> I mean, like half an hour down the drive, there is one car coming down. He turns around and he says, I told oh, you. The <laughs> really fast. That's a lovely story. Um, and I think the final project we've got is, I think we're going to Sicily, aren't we? Yes, uh, this is our current project. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a hotel called Villa Igea that we are very lucky to do together with Roccoforte Hotels and together with Olga Polizzi. Um, it's, it, it's funny, it's a coincidence because I actually s organized my sister's birthday there um, about six, or, six years ago. And even because longer, it, yeah. Even long, yeah. But it, and it, it is a, it's the Grand Dame of, of um, Palermo. Palermo. It's a late 19th century building, uh, very grand. But when I, I, I organized my sister's birthday, I must say the, the, the building was about to collapse. It really? was actually falling yeah, apart, but tired. you could still see the magic of it. So imagine that five or six years later, we get a call from Roccoforte Hotel saying, would you be interested in working on this project? I mean, you know, the two of us fainted. Wow. Saying, Ma, this is <laughs> and, and it's been a pleasure to, I mean, mm. a lot yeah. of work, but a, a great yeah. pleasure to work mm. on the project. And again, you've got the, you know, the, the colours of, I mean, the, the colour of the wall and the colour of this incredible turret outside. I mean, it's an absolute match. It's beautiful. And we'll open in, in uh, April. We really? Hope, we hope. Well, let's, let's, <laughs> let's hope we can travel again. <laughs> Actually, the hotel is fully booked. Fully booked. So, yeah. Is it? Oh, is we, it? Have to so open. we have to open. Yeah. Yeah. How lovely. Um, and also, of course, the, the product design is a, is a huge a part of the, the business as well, the furniture and textiles and, and yeah. lighting. And again, you, you, you work with people, craftspeople and manufacturers all over the world, don't you? Um, there's a project that you've, I think, relatively recently, a wallpaper project you've worked with, with a foundation in, in Italy. Can you tell us a little bit about that? A wonderful story, yeah. Uh, yeah, we've got a picture, I think, of the craftspeople at, at work. Um, yeah, this is a rehab center in Italy. It's called San Patrignano. And actually, Philip discovered them on Instagram. He saw some pictures of them on Instagram. And every day he was saying to me, Paolo, you must call them. And I kept on saying, yes, I will call them. Yes, I will call them. And then, you know, Philip is always like, he's pushing me, pushing me. One day I said, okay, fine, I'll call them now. <laughs> So I picked up the phone, I called them and I said, I would like to see more things that you do. And we went and visit them. The place is absolutely wonderful. Philip and I, Bretek, we mm. fell in love the day we arrived. As I said, it's a rehab center where people go for serious drug addiction. It started in the 70s in Italy. Mm. And it's now been there for more than 50 years. Yeah. So they've seen thousands and thousands of boys and girls coming in and going out. So with the day yeah. they arrive, these people, they've lost everything. They don't wow. have a life anymore. But then when they leave there, they leave with their life back with dignity 
and skills. Well, and skills. And skills. Mm. Uh, yeah. Some of the skills that they teach them is um, this wallpaper, this amazing wallpaper, which is like stenciling and hand printing and hand wow. printing. It started all with uh, Renzo Mongiardino, which is the great Italian interior designer. And when he died, actually, in his will, he left all the designs of the wallpaper uh, uh, with San Patrignano. And the day we went to visit them, yeah, Philip was looking around and he saw on the floor this very beautiful old leather bag with this sample sticking out. And he said, what is that? And the guy said, oh, it's such an old thing, so, you know, just leave it there. <laughs> so for us, it was like a treasure trove. We started, you know, looking around everywhere. Then we reinvented this collection of Mongiardino. And today, we are, we are proud to say we are the worldwide distributor of this wallpaper oh, for San Patrignano. Wow. But for us, it's like giving back because actually these boys and girls, they're, they're giving so much to us that every time we manage to sell a meter of, of wallpaper, for me, it's like giving back to them. Mm. They really deserve it. It's a wonderful, yeah. wonderful, wonderful It's, it's wonderful a wonderful place. community, I promise you. Yeah, absolutely. It looks incredible. And that <laughs> sense of story that you have in a lot of your products goes on, doesn't it? I mean, is, is that important to you? 100%. Mm. Yeah, as we yeah. said, from at the, you know, the inspiration for us is always about traveling, looking around, you know, so when Philip and I, we travel, we see things, you know, everywhere, we pick things, you know, we get inspiration from everywhere. We never yeah. start working, really, even when we travel for us, it's work, because we are always looking at things, getting inspiration. But also, I have to say that we, we are extremely, extremely lucky to be surrounded by amazing staff. I mean, all the people that work with us, but we, we wouldn't be where we are now without them. Mm, so mm. We have a great team all around. Everybody is passionate. Everybody yeah. is passionate. In the design it shows. team, it shows. In the design yeah. team nobody walks. Everybody Absolutely. Walks. We've got some more pictures um, just to just sort of just yeah. demonstrate that and just the range of things you do. This is um, a fabric. The one, on, the one on the left actually has a funny story because we had a, um, a leak in our dining room here in, in, in the country and we had the curtains, the leak was fixed, the water was gone, the, the wall was repainted. And then a year later, I saw these watermarks on the fabric. And I thought they're really pretty. So I took pictures with my, my iPhone. I gave it to the girl that does the repeats uh, in, in our office for, for fabrics. And lo and behold, this is what you see. This is the result of it in our dining room. <laughs> well, I wish the leaks in my house looked as beautiful as that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by the way, you can come and see it. <laughs> but almost, um, <laughs> almost every single one of our fabrics has a story behind Amazing. it. Amazing, beautiful. Be like we found a document somewhere when we are redoing a house, or again, when we are traveling, you know, if we see a, a little piece of fabric or a cushion, we always buy. By the way, both of us, we are, how do you say, shopaholic. Yeah, so <laughs> we always buy, buy, buy everywhere. And somebody years ago said to me, if you really like, if you really like it and you can afford it, buy it because you will never see it again. And it's, true. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good tip. Um, and tell us a little bit about the, about the craftsmanship. I think the next um, picture we've got is of the um, Adne uh, collection, which is furniture and lighting, I think. And it's, there's a story behind the craftsmanship of these. It's collection, it's brand new. So we are just starting with this collection now. We are presenting this collection at the moment uh, worldwide. It's a collection which is inspired by Jacques Atnay, so it's all leather hand stitched. Mm, beautiful. Uh, we started with one small lamp, and now we have about seven or eight different lamps, wall lights, small furniture. We have uh, bedside tables, we have a desk, we have, and the collection is getting bigger and bigger because the response has been unbelievable. unbelievable. Mm, I'm sure. Yeah. And it's, it's, very, it's beautiful. Very and it's, saddle, it's hand saddle stitched, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. 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 And the beauty of leather, you know, it's, it's alive. Mm. Changing. Mm. That's what I like, you know, because mm. it's changing. They're never too exactly the same. That's what I like. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm. And is this, is this um, UK craftspeople or where are these from? Okay, this is a combination. Some is made in UK and some is made in Italy. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah. And then I think we've also got some pictures of another another lighting collection, um, which is manufactured in the UK. The Montparnasse collection. Uh, the Montparnasse. The Montparnasse um, is all made in UK. It's all yeah. made in UK. It's all uh, plaster. 
Um, and um, this is funny. This is actually neither Paolo nor I designed this. Ah. I just gave a, a, a brief to my team and I said, I want something in between Brancusi and um, um, Giacometti. You figure it out. And okay, well, they, they, they've answered everything. your brief. <laughs> and, but but what, is, what is important about the three last or four last slides is that how, how fortunate Paolo and I are, are, are to be working with really craftsmen. Yeah. You know, people that, 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 that keep their different crafts a life. Mm, and mm. This for me as an interior designer, I mean of course it's important in, in, in developing collections, but on projects, it, I mean the privilege of, if you see what some people can do, it's unbelievable. Mm, and the privilege mm. to work with these artists is, is unbelievable because yeah. I can think it, I can think it in my head, um, but they make it happen. Mm, mm. No, that's such a, that's such a good point, um, and all of these myriad of, of um, designs come together in your showrooms. Um, how do you curate those spaces so that when we walk into them, which hopefully we'll be able to do in person before too long, we you know we're transported into into your world. Uh, the showrooms, I mean, yes, we call them showrooms, but for me, they're not showrooms. It's my second home because we spend most of our time there. You know, we spend so much time in the showrooms because our offices are next to the showroom in Holbein Place. The showroom in Chelsea Hub, Design Center Chelsea Harbour is where I go every day to check. Which is this one, isn't it, that we're looking this at? This one, yeah. yeah. So for me, I don't want them to look like showroom. I want them to look like my second home. So mm -hmm. they have a very welcoming feel. They look like a home, you know, they, they always have, flowers, we always have, you know, and we change them regularly, regularly, regularly. But we don't display goods like on shelves, you know, one, bam, 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 bam. I like when people come in to get the feel of the, the whole room. And when we're lucky, we have people coming in and say, I'll buy the whole thing, which is <laughs> that makes my best day. No, that, but apart from that, it's, it's also for us, it's very important, you know, to have a feel of a home. Mm. a relaxed place where we can meet our clients, we can meet sometimes friends, you know. And I have to say, at the Design Center in Chelsea Harbour, they've been amazing with us because from the day we arrived, we had such a strong welcome. And today, I mean, it's just wonderful. I love being there. I love being mm. there. Also, we are surrounded by so much creativity. Everybody's there. All the big fabric houses are there. Everything is under one roof. Yeah, it is a really special place, and, and hopefully we will be able to be there in person again before. before yeah, it's very, yeah, it's very soon. <laughs> just, just finally, on that sort of sense of us all being, you know, confined to our homes, I wondered whether it's kind of cast a light on the, the power of design to transport us. So whilst we can't travel anywhere in person, can we, you know, use design to, to take us elsewhere? I, I... My, my, my objective is not to take you elsewhere, it's take you to a happy place. Okay. I want, if, if, if I'm successful with a room, and um, touch wood, I've been with, with, with some of my clients, when they, they walked into a room, and you could see the eyes light up, and they were happy. It's not about the detail, it's about the whole thing. It's mm. about if I can give you that happy feeling by walking into a room, I'm done. <laughs> what, a, what a wonderful note to end on. <laughs> thank you so much. We could have talked for, for ages. And um, thank, you. thank you for your time this afternoon and enjoy West Sussex. <laughs> it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. Thanks very Bye. much. Bye. Bye. Bye.